think the most common pa um, patterns of hair loss in Asians or anybody in, in any part of the world, for example, would probably be male or female pattern hair loss. Again, male pattern hair loss is more common and more men suffer from that than the proportion of women suffering from female pattern hair loss. Other very common types of hair loss would be telogen effluvium, which is a very broad category in itself and happens to many varying people for varying reasons. Telogen effluvium can happen after uh, immense stress from surgery or even developing an infection like dengue fever and typically the shedding happens about three months after the injury or the stressful period. Telogen effluvium can also happen even after exam stress, work stress, family stress, emotional stress as you name it. Um, this kind of hair loss can also happen chronically from maybe iron deficiency or from other types of mineral or vitamin loss. Um, so again, telogen effluvium is a very broad category, very, very common other than pattern hair loss. The other very, very common condition would probably be maybe alopecia areata. That is a form of autoimmune hair loss that can affect maybe up to 1% of the population at large. So typically, this is um, really asymptomatic. There is no itch. Oftentimes, it is a patch that just opens overnight, so-called. It's noticed by a hair stylist that tells the patient that, hey, you've got a bald spot opening. So that is autoimmune in nature and is treated usually with a form of um, injection into the scalp uh, to stimulate hair to regrow. I recommend washing your hair every day in Singapore's climate. Just once a day is probably enough and not longer than once every two days. Why? Because in Singapore's humidity, there is a lot of buildup of residue, a lot of buildup of oiliness. Typically, oiliness is not great for the scalp, especially um, if you have pattern hair loss, um, the increased amount of oil sitting on the hair follicles does increase the contact time of uh, dihydrotestosterone on the hair follicles. So I always tell patients that contrary to what they think, especially when they have hair loss, they oftentimes try to wash their hair, hair less often. I tell them that really washing the hair, keeping the scalp clean um, on a daily basis is absolutely essential. I think um, in order to know whether you're a good candidate for hair transplant, you probably have to see um, a dermatologist beforehand who specializes in hair loss and hair transplantation to determine if you're a suitable candidate. Oftentimes, patients may think that they're suitable for hair transplant, but if they have another condition um, that is undiagnosed, they may not be that suitable at that juncture. For example, if you have a condition like alopecia areata or the autoimmune form of hair loss that was very, very recent, like two months ago or three months ago, and it's just recently stabilized, and you also have male pattern hair loss, which you're trying to treat with a hair transplant, I would usually recommend patients to wait this out. Let the alopecia areata be burnt out for more than a year before we even contemplate doing hair transplantation. Otherwise, sometimes this might activate the autoimmune hair loss and that might actually occur after hair transplantation. Or for example, somebody may have coexisting scalp psoriasis and actually if you instrument the scalp for hair transplantation and the scalp psoriasis is not well controlled, it may actually aggravate um, the psoriasis and actually cause it to flare up. So there are many con uh, issues to consider before going into hair transplantation. There is a correlation between um, some of the hair supplements, for example, like biotin, and the strength and the quality of the hair, as well as hair growth. Typically, a supplement like biotin does strengthen hair, as well as your nails. It does also um, increase the rate of growth, so typically, um, it helps the hair grow out faster. There is no formal test that can help you evaluate the strength or the quality of your hair and there's no really formal real grading scale or classification for that as well. Um, however, you can have your doctor look at the hair follicles and the roots under a trichoscope that can help the doctor determine if there's any other form of hair loss and to look at the quality of the roots growing out. There is one other test that you can do which is a hair pull test. Typically, um, we will sample some of the hairs and look under a microscope to see how many hairs are in the growth stage, which is what we call the anagen stage, and how many of the hair bulbs that we pull are in the telogen stage or the sleeping stage. Typically, in terms of ratio, we want uh, most people to have at least 85 to 90% of the hairs in the anagen stage and 10 to 15% in the telogen stage. We do not want the ratio of telogen to be tilted, such as more than 20 or 30%. Typically, when that happens, then it may signal that the patient is having a condition called telogen effluvium. So that may mean that the hair is actively shedding and is unhealthy. But with regards to the hair 
fibre quality in itself is really just a visual examination to determine if it's very brittle or whether it breaks very easily. And if you find that certain patients come with congenital conditions and the parents tell you that, oh, my child has always had very easily broken hairs, sometimes it may signal the dermatologist to look for other genetic conditions that may be associated with very brittle hair. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.